Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Axel Play Something. Um, in this case, it's not so much versus because I have played this game through completely um, at least once or twice in other forums. Uh, so this is me kind of demonstrating it more because I'm going to be doing a new game plus uh, with this one. So that way I can kind of bypass some of the tedium aspect and kind of demonstrate the, the core aspect of the game. And what's kind of nice with the way they handled a new game plus is if you want you can turn the enemies levels up or down so if you want to you know do some battles or have a challenge you can do so or if you want to kind of breeze through and run past enemies with no problem this is available for you as well um, it also allows me to show off certain story elements that are kind of optional without having to go through the rigmarole of them because some of these things were better in concept than execution. So this game is what I consider kind of like a, a flawed gem. There's something interesting in here. There's a lot of ideas that I really find interesting. Um, and there's some execution problems, but, you know, that's the way art is. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons this gripped me, as opposed to other uh, games, might that uh, I might have overlooked is that this one has a scenario writer that I uh, kind of am a fan of, uh, Satomi Tadashi, the one responsible for the original uh, progenitors of the Persona series, uh, one through two and two and a half, essentially. Um, he was also involved with uh, Digital Devil Saga, which I also really enjoyed. Um, and I, I like his writing and, and the fact that he takes psychology into account when he's like dealing with characters and I, I think he's interesting um, and he has some neat thoughts going on in here so um, and other interesting aspect of this is that the producer of this uh, I think uh, Takuya uh, God I can't think of it right now it's off the top of my head but he was originally a uh, counselor uh, and uh, psychologically and then decided to branch out into gaming instead so kind of a a little bit of this uh, comes from his experiences um, Yamanaka that's it Yamanaka Takuya now I remember um, I'll just grab this one whichever which one did I make? I'll just do this. I don't remember. Yes. I'm just gonna go with normal, because whatever. I'm really just demonstrating the story anyway. Um... So we have a decision for us uh, live watchers of this. Are we going to go with the male protagonist or a female protagonist? We have a choice in this game, um, unlike the more recent, <laughs> unlike Persona. Um, so there's not going to be a lot of differences overall. There are actually a few differences between how some characters interact with you um, because of just their relationship to, to the various sexes. Um, and their own um, traumas therein. So uh, the, each one is slightly unique, but not enough to necessarily make it like, you know, a game balance thing or change the plot entirely. So uh, if anybody has a preference, uh, we, can, we can pick live. I, I don't have a, a real preference here at this point. I've played through both in my own time at some point, um, whether in English or in Japanese. Uh, so, if anybody has any preference, I am probably just going to go with, oh, so, I think I might go with just the, let's go with the male protagonist. 
Oh, uh, only six characters for my first name. Oh, man. So I did Makoto, but I think I'm gonna do... Toya for Wisteria Knight. Last name. Saito. Oh, that's a really common last name. So let's do... Um... Hmm. Nekoda. It's a cat. Or you would it would be a uh, cat field or a cat patty. <laughs> but I like Nekoda. <laughs> it's a cat. So, um, you could also use different kanji for nekoda, but uh, I'm gonna go with nekoda as a very simple pun. So. Thank you! <laughs> you. Well, that's the the thing. The thing. So the thing about this is that everybody, including yourself, uh, are people who heard her song, and more or less had really fucked up lives and aren't happy with it and now we're here representative for current students your congratulatory speech please so representative for current students year two class four kotono kashiwaba so this is a graduation ceremony if you cannot read upper up in the upper left corner there So normally you have someone who gives a speech of sorts, kind of a normal... They apparently never say much interest. So next up, a response from the rep representative for the graduating students. So. And then now we have the graduating student from Year 3, Class 4. Kensuke Hibiki. Year 3, Class 4, Kensuke Hibiki. Hi. Oh, and here he comes to give his speech, and this memory fades into the past. Oops, it's no longer a, uh... We have now skipped forward in time to... The school entrance thing which is usually about you know two weeks or maybe a week away after the graduation sometimes it's like almost immediately after um so hey now now it's the new year japanese uh schools start in april so oh looks like i am the student representative for the second year Let's talk, let's welcome the new students. Give a, you know, kind of like the pat speech that... You know, welcome to hell, kids! So that concludes the congratulatory speech. Next, an address from the new student representative. New student representative, year one, class one. Kensuke Hibiki. Hi.
So now we've seen the whole... Reality doesn't look as real anymore now. Now everything looks very game-like to, to everybody. Well, to him, at least. Sorry, I've only made the city so far, so you can't use the station yet. Besides, I promised not to let anyone out of here. But I've erased your memory, so you shouldn't even think about leaving Mobius. Did something happen that you don't like? It's like we're getting a, you know, you rated the app a one, and then the customer service representative is like calling you. He's like, hey, can we can we fix the situation so you can raise the score a little bit? Except this time it's an AI, it's an AI singer. Mobius, what the fuck? Mm. Oh boy, that's not, you know, um. A bad sign or anything. Mobius. Yeah, incredible is is perhaps the word I would use. Incredible. Yeah, I think I kind of noticed that everybody has like the same uniform and body and you know, reality's not working right. Um, <laughs> I don't want anything. Maybe some money. A lover, I guess? I mean, I... <laughs> she's not very subtle about this. I mean, she's probably gonna try to make a deal. I mean, money's not gonna help me because, like, this world is fake. So, like, it's fake money in a fake world. It might as she might as well be giving me Bitcoin, okay? Um, and the lover, any lover she would give me would be an AI doll that she created. That I would be aware of the fact that it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I found out that I was in, like, a like a VR simulator of life and that, like, all of the memories I've been currently living were just, like, a part of the setting. It's basically that Rick and Morty episode where they play the video game about that guy's life. It's not even about that. It's a bit in this epi in an episode where it's a VR game where you just go through some guy's life. It's like you are inside of that and then you go, like, oh, shit, none of this is real. And... Well, you found, found out that the administrator said, yeah, um, you're not allowed to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is suddenly a bunch of uh, things that we will totally understand. Mew, quick, disable the Mobius loop. Okay, so we understand that we're on something that is repeating over and over again, as we saw 
a kid graduated and is now a first year student again and other people besides us kind of notice but everyone else seems to be totally fine with this um, now she's saying that they need, need, they need to go home to Metaverse, Metaverse S I guess, and S is probably the German idea of id or of self I think She sounds like a little girl, uh, you know, being told to come home after, you know, it's like, hey, it's time for dinner, you have to come back from playing. I can't, I promised I'd play all night! She is like a child. Because she is an AI, she is not smart. Well... Okay, I mean, getting beaten up by a crowd of concert goers is probably a really bad idea. Yeah, like, they were entranced by her song. They, they saw her their idol fly away to talk to you and then run off. Oi, what's that? <laughs> and he decides to headbutt us into sanity. <laughs> okay, I will trust you, I guess. Not not a very well choreographed scene. I think they definitely had uh, limitations of uh, animation engine here. Uh, this was a game they had totally had to remake from the ground up in a new <sighs> engine. So, so this game had some a troubled production past. So, uh, honestly, the, the, the sound design in this is probably the best part, and the voice acting is very good. Um, so first we have Shogo Satake, our first other named character. Yeah, everything is weird. Oh boy, a friend. Oh, he has more friends, huh? Yeah, we all noticed the Matrix. She seems trustworthy. Everybody in this situation seems extremely trustworthy. <laughs> Uh, well. So, uh, fun fact about this game, uh, the voice actress from you, and also the one singing most of the music in this game, is a actual voice actress who was the sample for a real Vocaloid software out there. Um, I think she's the sample for Ren and Rin, or whatever that, that one is. Um, so it's kind of a neat thing there. So the a lot of the music producers that were asked to um, produce the music for this game, because each of the villains have a real-life Vocaloid producer that wrote the songs for the musician villain characters. And so they got to have a real singer sing the stuff that they had normally composed for Vocaloids. So it's really interesting. So like it's the same actress though singing all the different songs in the different styles throughout this game. So it's kind of neat. Um, and then 
Arya's voice actress, I can't remember her background entirely. Um, she ends up not really singing many songs in this game. Um, but she ends up being much more of a, a support character in this one. The more emotionally intelligent of the two, I would say, like, the one who kind of understands people the best would be Arya versus, um, I kind of like to think of Mew as the ultimate enabler. She is the AI who wants to make you happy, therefore she will just give you what you think is makes you happy. Um, Arya kind of understands limits. That's kind of the big difference. Um, so Virtual Doll is also a concept that this now series is introducing, where it's a kind of a an AI vocaloid that's able to kind of understand the content of the song and therefore give a better vocal performance from it. Well, now we have to tell her why we're here. Every embarrassing thing. Yep, so basically every person who's in this simulation that's an actual person and not a, you know, an AI that was created just to support it was a person who basically reality sucked so bad that they went, yes, please take me to this. I would rather be in this than real life. And then they're in this without any memories that they made this choice. So, we... Human relationships suck. The future scares me. I have no self-confidence. I can't escape my past. Let's be honest here. My dreams seem unattainable. I don't know what I want to do. Let's say my dreams seem unattainable. So there's actually ends up being quite a bit of options here, you know, if you think about it, like of all the different, the, the tree that is being done here. You could be this honest. I want more support from others. I want to fulfill my goals. I want others' dreams to fail. Um, wow, you could actually choose to be quite a qu quite a piece of shit if you want. Um, I want more support from other people. So I chose that one because that seems actually, you know, something harder to ask for. The idea of wanting help, the idea of saying, I want to start on this project and I don't know what to do, I need help. You know, that, that could be a idea of saying, hey, you know, I, I want to be selfish or I don't want to be selfish, etc. So I felt like that could be a proper complex for this character. So, taking this kind of pain and suffering that we've been hiding... So, hey, you know, you're on shadow, you can't escape it, and it grows and grows and grows. And now... Yep, see, and now that you are freed from the shackle of your own ego, let it all go. get a, a piercing through your your chest and a bunch of flowers grow out of it and you get weapons and parts of yourself underneath oh, are revealed no, as your no, outer shell breaks so away so. yeah what the hell's his well the inside of my heart is a couple of guns one Labeled curiosity and the other satisfaction because I'm a cat. Alright. 
let's use my own anxiety and suffering and project it onto others in a in a physical attack. The catharsis effect, so, so releasing all of that out there in a as a weapon against other people who are trying to get you to conform to a set standard. So in this game you have, it is like, it's a time-based thing, and you can kind of arrange all of the um, attacks to kind of hit at certain points to um, either, you know, attack weaknesses or get other combinations to work out. So it's been a bit since I have played this, so I have to remember. Um, oh boy, I could just really nail these guys down. Okay. And I'll confirm. So, most battles will be a bit more difficult. I can set my standards to be a little bit the weapon. Sorry, I can set the enemy levels to be much more around my own. We'll be doing tutorial fights for a while, so. It does not matter. Yeah, where'd you get that gun? Yeah, so you know how humans internalize everything, right? <laughs> Sounds like she's trying to start her own stand up there. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you know how we humans be. We, we do internalize everything. So this, this, this game is already being a lot more psychologically direct with what it's dealing with than, than any of the Persona games 3, 4, or 5 already. Um, but yeah, people use things like reason and principles and ethics and, you know, the little mental magical powers that we think we've developed to put that all aside into a deep little, little box inside of our psyche. Which is otherwise, you know, if you want to be Jungians, known as our shadow. So, uh, as a principle is, the, the more you avoid your shadow, um, you are therefore changing your actions and behavior on behalf of avoiding said shadow. That is why avoiding and trying to um, tuck away these things ends up becoming perhaps a, and denying these things and pushing them away ends up becoming a self-destructive practice. Um, and also ends up showing up on our sleeve in the, for, in the forms of things like say, Freudian slips or projection, for example. Um, so in this case, they're taking that metaphor much more directly, where that kind of, you know, twist of desires that they have kind of denied themselves is, you know, being let out. And it kind of is kind of concentrated and has come out and became, you know, masks and weapons. So there you go. With, with no kind of concern for what others think anymore, uh, they can show what their true self is and they kind of, and with their brains all messed up from, you know, mind control music, that's what kind of comes out instead. So, because of your own sense of cognition that you know this, this whole space is kind of fake and that there is a real world and you have an ego to protect, um, you have like kind of a limiter on it. 
こんな世界に来てまで人目気にして生きてる小心者だからってことか。Yeah, they, they fear actual, they still fear consequences because they're, they're aware of the situation they're in. そのおかげで暴走せずにいられるんだよ。ただ、その心の力ってこの世界じゃ特に強力だからね。So essentially, what they're describing here is the, the idea that these characters have the super ego still. Like, unlike the, the digi heads who only have their id, these characters have the super ego, which essentially keeps that in check, and that is essentially what forms the ego, which is the negotiation between the id and the super ego.、Um, so, essentially, because these characters and their awareness of things, they have a A sense of、um, moral standard that's different than this world's. So, Kote, Jolie Tanto, no Aria Chanto, Karo, what the Bozo Sio, the Sir Kokoro, Yoshio, Shite, and the Cassassinari Chano. So, in more, more or less words, she's kind of, you know, able to help you focus that power. So essentially, she is kind of like your, your psychotherapist who is, you know, your emotions and, and your desires are coming out and they're helping you、uh, refocus them into something productive. Honestly, pretty good. Catharsis. So now it's introducing another concept,、uh, a metaverse.、Um, たまたま同じ頃に発売された私とミオはメタバーセスにあふれる情報のみを漂ううちに自分の意思で動けるようになって友達になったんだ。So, essentially, a metaverse is kind of like the internet, is essentially a metaverse that exists. It is a second consciousness that we all have going at the same time,、um, and another identity. It, you know, it's like when you're on the internet, you're kind of in a state of dreaming, really. And that's kind of what a metaverse is, is you know, that other self that kind of exists outside of us now, but is still psychologically connected. It's weird. Ah, so n o t h e man of Bacha Dora Moitaka. Conna Chibija Nakata King of Suga. The metaverse is the number. A test that you are Neto no Koto, Kaso Kaka no metaverse to Muiski no ESO Taste. Okay, so I, I, I remembered pretty well then <laughs> that yes, S is the German word for the, the id and a metaverse, which is, I mean, she calls it a virtual reality, but yeah, it is kind of like a collective consciousness. It's like when people say Twitter or Reddit as a shorthand to describe, like, oh, Twitter is acting like this today. When they don't mean the company or the software, but they mean somehow the collective will of people is acting a certain way. That would be kind of like, well, that's the metaverse that's happening.、Uh, so here you go.、Uh, you know, hey, you know, we put, we put tons of shit out on, on the internet, you know, and that. Has an effect. I touched it in its good decorated Kukunimo. Your buddy, so you monoga window. Mina no Trasama, it I hold a star at the Kurunda. So we get into some sci fi here. Uh, you know, what happens to an AI who is, you know, put out into the world and is tinged by what people, you know, give it? In this case, hey, if this AI needs to understand your lyrics and sing them. If you make them sing about like all sorts of horrifying problems and sadness, they're gonna have to understand and start feeling that sadness in order to perform towards it. So. So here you go. Okay, they, they, they do start getting into it there. Okay. 
So remember that AI that was released onto the internet and then just started becoming a racist because that's just what people started feeding it? It's kind of like that. Um, you know, except less racism and more, you know, Japanese song idol that is singing about human sadness and gets their ideas of what makes people happy from Japanese media. So... She thinks high school is the best, so everybody has to repeat this loop of high school forever. He ends up having, <laughs> despite acting kind of weird at the beginning, he has a very rational approach to going like, hey, you know, I don't entirely trust you yet, but I, I, I kind of get it. And here we get introduced to not all of our cast, but a good, excuse me, a good set of it. Um, <laughs> I kind of like this joke. I mean, just as a concept, so like, you know, they meet in the music preparation room because, in that, you know, they have a virtual doll to sing all their music instead, so. And that's very much what they're hiding. And also, um, um, another funny pun in all this is that if you look at all the kanji in their names, uh, all of them have an instrument as their name. So all these characters who aren't the musicians who they're battling all have uh, instruments in their name, and they are all arranged in, and they meet in the music prep room, because the world doesn't value traditional instruments. Get it? Ah, uh, ah! Uh, <laughs> it's pretty. I think it's a pretty good joke. Um, it it's, takes a really a while to get, but it's kind of neat. Um, another thing you'll notice. Um, Again, you'd have to know kanji for this, is that all the villains, their real names have flowers in there. And the main characters in this, they have the flower stuff instead. So it's kind of neat. Um, again, you can't possibly figure this out if you just know this in English, but I just thought that's kind of fun. Uh, so his bandana, I think, are anemones, which generally have extremely negative, I would say, connotations in, in flower language, almost always talking about death or loss. It is not a happy flower. <laughs> um, abandonment is another one there, too. Um, but mostly death and fragility and all, all that stuff. I actually end up liking Arya quite a lot in the support role. Um, I like her personality. You'll see. She's, she is kind of a little bit like a therapist of sorts, but not directly. I like her way better than a lot of the more recent uh, Persona side character mascot ones. Okay, so another Japanese joke here. If you are in Japan and you're in the education system there, clubs and activities are very much encouraged and a big part. I mean, I mean the Japanese constitution itself is supposed to guarantee a culturally fulfilling life, you know, which is different than even our constitution. So, you know, in their public education system, they have the culture festival and all sorts of stuff. So, however, for various reasons, students who don't want to participate in any of that often 
go, you know, they call themselves as a joke the Kitakubu, which is just the Go Homers. You know, like I'm just, oh, oh I'm a part of a club. I'm part of the Go Homers. Um, so, as a joke here, again, it's a pun. The they're the Go Homers. They want to actually go home for real. Bum ba bum, another pun. <laughs> So there's a bunch. I mean, again, this is a this is the writer of the original personas versus the third, versus the newer. Um. I don't know how much to also blame on a bit on the translation. There's a couple spots where I probably will disagree, but. Um, I think there's just one where. Sometimes the translation will add pronouns that the original language did not indicate, and it happened with the anime translation too. Um, so, um, if any of you are watching Megalobox, Joe's voice actor is the same voice actor as this guy. よかった。入学式を飛び出しちゃうなんて心配したんですよ、先輩。紹介する。ここにいる4人が俺たち北区部のメンバーだ。私は柏場琴乃よ。琴乃でいいわ。よろしくね。よし、入り。だいぶビビ
So, so like basically shopkeepers and people, bus drivers and people who make up the crowds. Um, it's only the students who are quote unquote real people. Uh, one note, Kotono Kashiwaba is also one of the, like, I think, oh. one of those badass characters in the series, and it's great. Flowers are, I think, Cosmos and Nemophilia, baby blue eyes. So basically, imagine if Hatsune Miku trapped you in, like, the Matrix. <laughs> You know, it would be finding out that, like, that equivalent. Like, to these characters, that, you know, Mew is that much of a character. Arya didn't sell as well, but she was paired with her. I mean, I like this better than just doing a black screen. Ah, uh, so here you go. So yeah, the music that the musicians in this world are producing are part of the way of keeping people um, happy and wanting to stay in this world. So, um, very much bread and circus. I mean, kind of very direct, <laughs> very direct, uh, I'd say, comparison there. So, this is one of the reasons I kind of wish this game got a little bit more attention, because there's some, some of these interesting thoughts in here. It doesn't necessarily go down some of these road, routes, um, but it kind of at least kind of touches on them, and I kind of like that it's kind of part of this universe, and kind of in there. So... Kotaro's not very smart. I'm gonna have to. But what I actually kind of like is there's actually gonna be a very, very good reason that Kotaro, um, is kind of as dim-witted as he is, and kind of maybe as emotionally stunted behind the rest of the cast. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh my god, they changed the translation where she kind of blo uh, mocks him for wearing the sunglasses on his head, like as if he thinks that's cool. <laughs> That's a really big translation change. いい加減にしとけよ。全然黙ってなかったし、受けて立つわよ。ねえ、オリオ。そもそも何のために<笑> <私には何が何だか… 笑> My guess is basically people didn't think about Arya enough, and so her presence in people's minds dwindled, you know? It's like someone just, you know, not being popular, so their message doesn't, you know, get seen by other people, and their presence diminishes. That's my guess. どういうつもりでミュウがはっきりしてるのはここにいる全員が本当の家に帰りたかってるってことだ。So yeah, you also have to realize um in this game none of these characters are friends yet or just friends. These are just people again very damaged people who have all they all they know is they just want to get home. They don't know Home's not going to be good. They just don't know. They just know this isn't. So. うん。現実離れしすぎてて あ、私も頑張ります。俺の腹は決まってる。どうする、小太郎。この手がかりを見過ごすつもりか。仕方ねえな。お前らだけじゃどうしようもねえだろうし。俺が助けてやんよ。Ego <笑> repair is one hell of a drug. 決まりだな。アリア。ミュウがどこにいるか心当たりは。I wish I knew enough about music to be able to get into why they chose Ostinato. Um, so I, I, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, I know that in Caligula 2, which is as of this recording been announced, the new set of musicians is the Obligato. So. so this place is essentially maintained by everybody's collective delusion or their collective love of you know the, these songs and you know all that type of stuff so if that's disrupted then the whole thing kind of falls apart that's why no one's allowed to go home because if some people are allowed to go home the power of the space diminishes so therefore it's become a trapped box so the musicians are people who are totally aware that this is fake, but prefer to stay. They know it's not real, and they would 
prefer this over reality. That's how bad they think they're, they're and in some cases, yeah, their life situations really are. Um, <laughs> そのカギピートやらだろうな。逆に考えれば、今このはい、シーリー。携帯持ってるか。帰宅部でグループを作ってあるから、ワイヤーのIDを教えてくれ。So instead of lying, they use wire。登録したグループのみんなとチャットができるアプリ。知ってるわよね。it's not actually a bad idea for a name of a chat service. Like, I've heard worse ones. She's <laughs> being cute. Hooray! I actually like the way they do the interfaces in this game. あ、ありが。新入りのあの能力。俺たちにも使えるようにならないのか。うーん、メビウスに気づくほどの現実への執着だし、みんなそう弱あると思うんだけど、こればっかりは確約はできないかな。だから私のいないところでは戦闘は避
uh -huh, or, or, or have real problems that need to be addressed. So um, giving them what they wanted uh, turned out to be a, a fucking disaster. And you can kind of actually watch this play out on all these other characters that aren't ones that actually interact with the plot. So unfortunately, the way to do these is that you... Yeah, you have to um, uh, do a whole bunch of like subquests essentially, um, and you will get to know these characters a little bit. Um, they don't get written very much; like they, their dialogue isn't very specific. So the only thing that's really unique about them is this kind of info that you'll see in these cards and their connections. So. In this one, and each class has its own story that's kind of going on, like something else that's kind of like messed up. So you have, let's say, um, a class who, who segregated everything. So you find out uh, a boy who sleeps a lot during class breaks enjoys drawing flip books. Not particularly great at talking to people, so he keeps quiet. People think he's as harm harmless as a sheep. Um, and you can have a secret, and you find out the secret in their true personality by uh, raising your affinity with them and finishing a subquest. So you find out that their trauma uh, is that, you know, this person... I don't know how they translated the names of the traumas very well. Like, some of them were actually medical terms, and I don't know how they exactly did them to this. Um, but as you unlock them, you kind of find out that... Uh, let's see. So here you go. A popular guy in class. One day, a savage demon that looked just like him manifested. He has no memories of this, but half the class doesn't believe him. Since then, some of them want him dead, while the other half try to protect him. So you have... Segregation. You have the Mastermind. She pretends to be neutral. While she insists Haruki is a demon, she knows she doesn't have proof. The demon Haruki likes her and has hurt her several times. And you found out that she was drawn to it and is secretly a kind of a destroyer person. So she's a... Uh, and this person has a problem of being a masochist. Um, and when you also... Uh, you, you not only get, like, a idea of what's going on in this kind of story, you also get kind of, like, things that help you in gameplay-wise, too. Um, so I actually went through, because I was just really curious about how these little narratives played out to do it. And it was not fun. Um, it's extremely uh, arduous and annoying, um, and I don't, I, I just, it's a good idea, um, and I think there's some kind of interesting stuff going on with it. Uh, it just was not really executed very well in this game. Um, so, um, yeah, so you find out what the, the, a lot of these people had, like, really, um, yeah, like, a really, really messed up backgrounds. Like, these are people who are adults or children who, you know, uh, he was, he basically was trying to do a, a lover suicide and didn't succeed. Um, and in this case, he, he has trouble, uh, forgiving himself. Uh, let's see. So was hit by someone who looked like Mai, despite that she's Mai's only friend. So she sides with mine, believing Haruki. So you can go to, let's see, where's, oh, okay, it's a Mahino. Um, and in this case, uh, you know, the guy that, you know, thinks his violent side is his friend and wants everybody to really think about, you know, he wants attention. Like that was his real, his real motivation this whole time was that he wanted attention and he kind of got it. Um, and you can also see like all the different people in the class, so like, you have the side that doesn't, you know, that thinks he's awful and one that wants to defend him. So this is the side that, you know, uh, on the surface seems to like novation. He'll pursue it relentlessly. So it's, you can kind of like get into like all these kind of interesting little aspects there. So again, much more interesting a concept than execution. I might at some point go through and try to just kind of detangle all these stories, but let's do that at a later time. Uh, let's go to our status real quick. That is us. Um, I have done a whole bunch of stuff, you know, because I've played through this game a decent amount, and so 
you know, I've done a pretty good job of leveling up. Let's go to our equipment. So equipment in this game are stigmas. <laughs> so you, you find them, at, uh, the game will explain them. Um, and so you have an attack impulse, a defense instinct, and amplification. Um, this went under a kind of a name change where it was, um, this was a manifesto was the attack impulse. Um, defense instinct was, I think, originally it was I, ID, um, one's ideals, like your, your, uh, your, your core, your core, core belief, that's it. It was your core belief. And then this was, um, a subconscious thing such as your like a, a trauma of some sort or or like something going on underneath it so they changed it to attack impulse defense instinct and amplification which is a bit more direct um, and if I want to it was kind of neat as a part of the DLC is that they created the artist created some uh, casual uh, clothing for all of the characters, and some of them are really neat designs, because again, the fashion and design in this game is on point, honestly. Um, right, uh, let's go to skills, which I have already done. Let's go to system. Let's go to configuration. So, battle difficulty, enemy level. So I need to, let's push the enemy level up a little bit so I don't vaporize them instantly. So I'll do that. Yeah. There we go. Sorry to have to put that all in there. Oh wait, I forgot to go to the classroom. Let's see, there's a... You have to go in here and question people. Nothing, huh? Well, let's regroup and try another classroom. Oh. Oh, and sometimes you'll find things in here. Wow, it's making me move really fast. There's a piece of paper on the ground. If you're reading this, you will die in a week. That's a prank. Touch upon mysteries of this world. You acquire skill points. Use skill points to learn skills. How novel. So, um... Again, this is now kind of pointless to me. So that's just another game mechanic in there. So you can find random things. Um, you can talk to the students. They don't really tell you too much other than just, you know... Uh, they're a bit too AI-like in the way they talk, so it didn't really work thematically in this game, so... It's a little pathetic, but as right of now, you're the only one to fend them off, so... Those guys at the train station that tried to rush after us further, they've fully, fully lost a sense of themselves. So, um, yeah, so if the battles, uh, if the enemies, uh, were at a high enough level, well, they'll just ignore me, so now I have to initiate. Arya, Saboto, Yoroshiku! So when you go into battle, the music changes and you can hear the lyrics that all these people have been indoctrinated with. So, I can... Let's see, dual trigger, let's see what happens. Okay, that is going to be doing a shooting thing. So what I can do is counter it. So it says shooting. That means I just absolutely blasted her. And then I can chain the action to just dual trigger him because he's not going to do anything special. So, boom. And what's nice is that um, if you hit someone's weakness, like basically if you counter an action, because there's no weaknesses, there's no elements in this game. Instead, it is what is this other person about to do? Is it going to try to do a a special skill that's a, a ranged attack, a melee attack, or something specific. And if they're going to try to do that, that leaves them with an opening for you to do a counter move. And, you know, the counters are very specific to the type of move that they're trying to use on you. So. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this guy's weird. 
So yeah, here you go. This is the going over what I was talking about earlier with the. Okay, well, let's see what he's gonna do. It's gonna be a. Oh, okay, he's not gonna do anything. Never mind then. Void Scream is a, a type of attack that doesn't have any associated thing with it. So a lot of this game is trying to set things up so that way other characters will then react to them and then pull off another move. So, you know, you, they will have things that are kind of setups and follow throughs. So you're actually kind of arranging things like you are a composer, uh, arranging all these different tracks to hit at the right time. Again, a nice little thematic thing that kind of works well with this. So this is talking about the fact that, yeah, like there is kind of like a mental pollution going around and you can see the percentage over people's heads. Hmm? That's... So here's a, a darker thing about that, this world. Again, nobody has gotten out. People can come in and people get added, you know, occasionally, but no, no one has gone out yet. And this thing has been hap running for... You don't know how many years. Like, some of these people might, might be, have been here for a decade, you don't know. You know? <laughs> so, um... So this is a soul remnant, Rakuin. They are the remnants of people's souls trapped in Mobius. Think about that word. That's disturbing. You said remnants. That used to be a human trapped in Mobius like us. Yes, humans whose souls disappear from Mobius for one reason or another. Their lingering will crystallizes like this. So basically, if you die in this thing, you don't... This is Your soul is here. So if it, it's... Yeah, so their regrets and their thoughts, you know, come come in the form of these uh, stigmas. So people who had a very specific, you know, thought in their head or, or something about them, it, it gets left behind. Much like the the the, the human dregs and dark souls. <laughs> um, so this is kind of how the items are in this game. Again, a kind of a dark concept of what we're actually equipping. So you can just go here, and you get a stigma. True rigor. Uh, let's see, do the plot thing here. Nope. So, nobody seems to know about where this musician might be. Oops, the camera went bad there. So, yeah, so some, some students will just attack you no matter what, you can't avoid it, except I am so high level that it does not matter, and I have not raised the level, so I'm at level 71, so I need to raise. Let's configuration. We'll just do that for now. There. So, if I wasn't as strong, I would then follow it up with this. So, Boom, 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 boom. And then if you had something that would then give extra damage for being in the air, you would then line up uh, a friend's attack to hit her while that enemy has flown. So it's it's a it's a fun battle system when you actually have like the right challenge for it, but um, it is fairly easy in this game, so if you really want challenge, you can you can actually really put yourself through the paces and there is some kind of fun elements to it um 
but for the purposes of wanting to demonstrate kind of like the story and feel of this game more than the gameplay aspects. Um, yep, so these are people who, who have really lost it. And again, the, the, the sad thing is is that these were once basically actual people. They've just completely <laughs> deteriorated. able to catch him in the aftermath. Oh, and if uh, a student that has an infection rate walks in, they will join the battle. So you have to hope that you won't be up. Okay, let's chain that with impulse spinner. And confirm. Let's see what happens. Boom! Okay, I actually got up this time. Boom! So, there you go. That's a, That was a little bit more like how the battle system works, and you can kind of see like when you start adding more characters to the mix, it gets kind of interesting and you're balancing a lot of stuff around. So it has potential, I think. So this is essentially like, hey, you know, if there's a treasure chest you want to open, the key is to perhaps defeat a very specific digihead to it. No wonder the crew so basically, uh, yeah, every, people who kind of watch this fight, it just looks like you're just having a fist fight with people because they, I don't know, you, you didn't like Mew's latest signal and sh they're just like, fuck you, man. Oh, I erased bystanders' memories anyway. Don't worry about all that. Just keep fighting digiheads. That... That doesn't seem right. <laughs> I love it. Huh. Tommy Tadashi has that kind of sense of humor where this it is a joke. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna get them both. Oh shit, yeah. Okay, and then impulse spinner. Let's see what happens there. Okay, let's chain with another impulse spinner. And confirm. Oh! Worked even better than I was expecting. Damn. Oh, there you go. Ba -bum. So I'm going to... Let's go to the system. I'm going to go lower the levels real quick so I can just run through this area more quickly. But I at least got to show off kind of like, hey, that's kind of how the battle system works for now. I will I will turn it back up for boss battles, I think, just to make that kind of fun. Uh, I don't think I have to do anything there. So let's just run all the way through this. Lost souls. Looks like you've gotten used to fighting. I should be surprised. This is what I saw in you from the beginning. Keep this up and keep defeating them. Don't push yourself too hard.
手がかりなしか他のみんなが何か聞いてるかもしれないしそろそろ一旦集まっちゃおうかお互いまともな収穫はないみたいだなねえねえ君隣のクラスの子だよね私機械な活動をしてるって噂の帰宅部について調べてるんだけどさ何か知らないかな I wonder if this person is a unique character、uh, so fun thing about this character this voice actress if you are a fan of there's a really great one of my all time favorite、uh, comedy a series、uh, weekly girls nozaki kun、uh, the voice actress of the main character in that with the Dotted bows and everything、uh, is the、uh, voice actress for this character. So, just a neat little thing with there. Just a little shout out to another series that I really like. どうしてそんなに帰宅部のこと知りたいのどうしてって秘密のクラブなんて謎めいててかっこいいからかななんかみんなの注目の的だしもしかして先輩情報持ってますえわ私は何も知らないわよじー<笑>そんなことより噂話が好きなんだったらカギピーって人のこと知らないカギピー最近人気のドールピーの動画サイトなんかでもすごい再生数稼いでますよね so, In Japanese nicknames, P is often used just as a short for producer So like, you'll often hear like, I don't know, anime people talking about like, oh, you know P something or something P is like, oh, that's the, that's the guy that's doing the producer on this thing. So that means this guy's a, you know, Kagi P. He's like a key, key producer, is his nickname,、uh, who produces things for, you know,、uh, what's the word for it?、Uh, the vocal, vocal dolls. I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh boy, we're getting real meta now. So, Kotoro coming right out of the gate as being like able to completely. Just improv and lie like this on cue. She is fucking amazing. Well, except when pushed. Oh, oh. God damn it. Quietly. Okay, and then at the end, she's saying, you know,、uh, chira is like a way of kind of like slyly, you know,、uh, batting your eyes as if you're like kind of secretly grinning. そんなかっこいいか<笑>いいぜ教えてやんよじゃじゃーん俺たちがその帰宅部だでも秘密だぜ God damn it, Kotaro You are the dumbest コタロこのバカの何考えてんだよ嘘マジやだちょっと待ってシャメ取らなきゃシャメおい勝手に取るなおっと命より大事なスマホをそう簡単には渡しませんって<笑> Isn't it like that for us all? それでそれでって何してるんです何いるんですか今ここにいるので全員何が目的なんですかずーっ
めんどくせえやつだな秘密なんかねえよただの仲良しグループだそんなことより鍵ピーを探してるって言ってんだろもうあ待って待って鍵ピーの情報ならバッチリ持ってますからこの森田なる子さんが案内しちゃうよさあさ行こう行こう目的地は3年4組だよそれじゃあ出発 So let's think about that. Who else did we hear did in year three, class four? Kotaro no group, Kagipi got Mitskaranaka Tokino Tamini, Hokarabo Show Shirabit o Degre. But also, when did we hear about and in what context was that? Specifically said, and why would someone remember and remembering that specific date be kind of strange? Let's see, I have to remember where to go. Ah, this way. She has herself a very snappy tie there, Miss Mizuguchi. Should be right on the other side of this hallway. Why is the door locked today? No, well, he's not going to make this easy for us. So, another funny thing. They. I don't know if I'd call it a lampshade again, but it's pretty funny. Oh, we're not going to get to the lampshade part yet. Kotoro, what happened? Uh oh. Ah, the jet got Kotoro and flew away. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! 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 Hurry up, こいつら俺たちのことをおいそいつを話せなんでそんなことおいおいこいつらも写真に載ってるやつだぜ見るの良さがわかんねえなんてどうかしてんじゃねえのか全員捕まえて教育してやろうぜくそ相手は二人かファ
ケガする前にどっかに隠れてろあ、わかったってばそんな怒らなくてもいいのに終わったら呼んでよね Yeah, she can't perceive what's actually happening くそくそもう少しで手がかりが見つかりそうだってのにいい加減にしようよこっちはこんなクソみたいな世界もううんざりなんだよ Well, aren't we all, Shogo? Aren't we all? 何がミュウだ何が鍵だくだらねえままごとなら、てめえらだけで一生やってろ I like this. 俺はさっさと家に帰るって決めてんだよ Wow, this takes me back to being in middle school. Go lie. 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 カセカオキナオセオダヨユウシュウゴモメザメタイケリオカトノタリモトサーシギリキョルグシアチョードミュウのミルクモアカネヨナダセロウガオレタチカテルトモタノガ捕まえる前に軽く遊んでやるよ準備はいいかああ、帰宅部活動開始とするか。See, okay, let's do the get rid of the rush. Construction trigger. So that's kind of how you do the battle system there. I like it a lot, actually. If it when when you have the right moments. ありがとう。助かったわ。ごめんね。迷惑かけちゃって。それにしてもびっくりしたわ。何あれ。目の前で体が割れちゃうんだもん。ユウたちがうちに秘めてる心の形さ。普段しまい込んでる心が殻を破って出てきたと思えばいいよ。まあ、俺は新入りがああなるのを見てたから驚きはしないが、こんな力使って本当になるか。This is newbies. It should be the,
私がいる限りは大丈夫だね殻を破るほどの心を正しい形に保つのが私の役目だからそういう存在がないまま感情を溢れさせちゃったのがデジヘッドだね力の出どころは一緒だよ私の力が万全ならメイビウス中の心は正常に保てたんだけど今はなるほどね So I love this because you're gonna I, I love this this is this is a nice twist on her previously being a damsel because Aria ちょっといいかしらん何何こともこれが私の形なのね。And she's just like, oh, okay, huh, this is how it works, right? She's like, what the fuck? おいトト急すぎだよびっくりだよ She just, she just fucking was able to reach down into her own heart and pull that shit out with no other prompt other than she just decided to at that very moment. <laughs> What the fuck? Go, man, go, man. That one, they get an act there, what's that there? She just. What? What are those singing in your crowd there? Naga, a sort of. What? What the fuck? Anna Joe Taikara Hats again, Sinna, t h e r You don't know what I know. You don't know what I know. とにかくこれで戦えるやつが3人か今までは逃げ回るしかなかったがこれならそういやこいつらは俺たちが帰宅部だって知ってよかったな一体どうして G, how did they? お、おーい G, I wonder why when they cut right to it って、相手の人伸びちゃってるけど平気なの Yeah, don't worry about it. She'll just erase their memories. It, I'm sure their brains will be fine. Hmm. Shibarak s r e b a m e l s a m a s a d e s a k u b e t e Yapari n a k a y a b a k o t o s I mean, yeah. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. The school has turned into a bit of a maze. And it turns in, and they actually have. They actually give a reason for it. I fucking love it. I don't know when we'll get there, but. Oh wow, the catharsis effect is so convenient. There was only the option to covertly run away from them now, until now. I think the Go Home Club activities are about to get a lot better. Yes, I'm ready to release my pent up anger. I feel like that's encouraging and also a bit dangerous. Someone's journal. The first entry is on April 1st, and the final entry is on March 31st. The text inside is written in anxious, jagged handwriting. Words are crammed in on every inch of the page. The last page reads I have discovered the anomaly. It's only a matter of time before I'm found out. That sentence is repeated over and over until the last page. You, are you an angel or. 
Welp. So for a lot of for a lot of people who got trapped in here, things didn't um, having their own psyche reflected back at them did not. Surprise, surprise, it did not work out well for them. Uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of exploration. A loyalist student. Yeah. So, this is another one of those instances where, depending on the gender of your character, uh, her interactions with you will be wildly different. And not in the way you expect. I think it's going to be that simple. Did you really not know her? I'm pretty confident I would remember such a distinctive person. I wonder what it was. Oh yes, I forgot. You can actually use wire. And you get little conversations. What kind of activities do you usually do? I don't know. Jeez, get together, President. It's hard to answer when you're asked straight out. Um, y well, yes. The name is Go Home Club, after all. I'm lost. You're the one who ran ahead of us. Get it together. But it really does become difficult to know where you are. If you don't have a map, you can't get back to the room. Now that you mention it, is Arya drawing up this map? Thank you for noticing. Shogo helps me sometimes. Oh, thank you, Shogo-senpai. Don't worry about it. I like to do this kind of work sometimes. Of course. Let me know if you have any questions. We all need to tell the newbie all the rules. I'm sorry, I don't know the rules either. Did we have rules? Don't worry about what Kataro says. Let's just have fun. So, and you can also talk to them individually. What do you think of Mobius? The fake animals that Mew made all look the same to me. Is that small thing a dog or a cat? So, <laughs> I love it because this is so. This is where you can get a lot of the little texture of like how the world works and how these characters kind of um, interact. So, you get to kind of like you can kind of learn about them in an optional way and in small little tidbits. Every day my wallet's refilled with a certain amount of money. I wonder if it's like an allowance. So that's something that he finds kind of concerning about this place. <laughs> Let's see what's his favorite season. I definitely don't like summer. It's much better when the weather is cool. Let's see, what, do you, what does he think of Mew? Mew's concert videos play everywhere. An idol, huh? I wonder what that's like. Uh, let's see, is there anything troubling you? Uh, it'd be easier for me to tell you what I'm not worried about. Let's find, what's, what's his birthday? Oh, January 22nd, I think? It took me a while to remember. Maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, let's see, what, what's his favorite game? I play a lot of historical games. I have so much free time. Do you believe in ghosts and aliens? I think I'm fine with there being aliens, but I'd rather not with ghosts. Oh, right. Right. The 
of foods I like. I like clams and stuff like that, like oysters, turbo sazae, hamaguri clams. I'm getting hungry. Oh, this is a... I don't know how, how what the joke is with this. It's a Japanese, like, asparagus. Stir it. <laughs> don't ask me that kind of stuff. I didn't do good at school, so you just not really... Do you prefer shrimp or crab? Just comfort me without asking anything. I don't really know what's going on, but things don't go the right way for me most of the time. I know how you feel. Aww. So yeah, you can get, you can kind of learn about the characters. These don't really matter because again, they're basically, you know, not really well sketched out. Um, but it's kind of neat. I think it's cute. So, um, I am going to probably take a break here and I will uh, continue this in another section. So, see you in the next part. <laughs>